Welcome to the channel Simplified. This video is an introduction to Excel modeling. We will cover some of the basics of Excel modeling by building a loan repayment schedule or a loan amortization schedule. This can come in handy if you want to keep track of your repayment obligations, whether it is a home loan, personal loan, education loan or vehicle loan. It will also be helpful for finance professionals if you want to learn how to forecast the debt repayment obligations of a company while projecting its cash flows. Along the way, we will introduce you to PMT function which is for calculating the loan EMI amount. We will also discuss how to freeze the reference to a particular column, row or cell which is something you have to be very careful about when copy pasting formulas. To start with, let's assume you are planning to take a loan of 10 lakh rupees. This is to be repaid over 10 years and the interest rate is 8%. First, we will tabulate all these details. Next, we need to calculate the EMI amount. For this, we have an inbuilt function called PMT, which stands for payment. Now, if I use this function directly on these numbers, I will get the repayment per year because each of these parameters are in annual terms. But we are making EMI payments, which means we need all this data in monthly terms. So I will calculate this by the side here. Interest will be 8% by 12 and number of installments will be 10 into 12, 120. Now we can use the PMT function. Like all Excel functions, we type is equal to and then PMT and open brackets. Now Excel already gives a hint here for the syntax. Syntax is nothing but the order in which you have to enter the values. So the first parameter is rate. So we will select this. Then comma. You can see that the next one has gotten emboldened. It's written N per. N per stands for number of periods. Number of periods or number of installments here is 120. So I will select this. Then there is PV which stands for present value. Present value is the amount that is exchanged on the first day of the cash flow, which is nothing but the loan taken. So it's 10 lakh. The next parameter is FV which stands for future value. But if you look closely, there is a square bracket around it. Whatever comes in square bracket is optional. You don't have to enter it. And after that, there is something called type. This is also optional and I will cover these at the end of the video. But for now, we will just close the bracket and hit enter. What you get is the installment amount. If you see, the number is in negative. Negative indicates any amount that you need to pay where money is going away from you and positive indicates money you receive. So this loan amount, we have put it in positive, which means that we are getting the money when we take a loan and we get the EMI in negative because we have to pay that back. If I make the loan amount negative, it would mean that I have given a loan. Then the PMT amount or the EMI amount will come in positive because I will be getting the installment back. The red color can be a little distracting, so I will change the formatting. Now we will proceed to build the loan repayment schedule or the loan amortization schedule. We will add the column headings. First one for counting the number of months, then opening balance, interest, outstanding amount, repayment amount and closing amount. Here I will enter the number of months. After entering 1 and 2, I will select this and drag it all the way till 120. The opening amount in the first month is 10 lakhs. Let's assume that I took the loan on 1st April. This is the amount that is outstanding as on 1st April, which is the opening balance. Next, I need to calculate the interest for the month of April. So that will be opening amount into interest rate per month. I will select this. Alternatively, you can also link it directly to this and divide by 12 within the formula itself. Both options are fine, but just don't forget to do the division part. It is a very common mistake where people forget to convert from yearly to monthly and it will result in absurd numbers. In this column, I am taking this plus this. So this is the amount due along with the interest at the end of the month that is on April 30th, but before I make the installment payment. And here I will enter the installment amount. I will link it directly to this. Once I pay the amount, how much will be left? that I am entering here. So that will be this minus this. This amount has to be deducted from this. So my balance here should be lower. Since this number is already in negative, I can just add it. Or I can put a negative here to make it a positive amount. In this case, I will have to subtract it. 
but just ensure that this amount is not increasing but it should be decreasing. So this is what is left after I make the EMI payment. Now for the second month, the opening balance is this amount. End of last month is same as beginning of this month. Now for the interest in the next month, that is in May, I should calculate it on this opening balance. Instead of again entering the formula, I can just drag this down. When I drag it by holding the bottom right corner, it just copy paste the formula to the bottom. When I see the formula that has come here, the reference is automatically changing from this cell to this cell, which is good. But here it is changing from F2 to F3, which is incorrect. I want it to remain F2 itself. So I will undo and go here and add a dollar symbol right before the number 2. By doing this, I am freezing or fixing this 2. Now when I drag, you can see that it still remains F2 itself. But if you drag it to the right, you can see that F is becoming G because we have not fixed F. If we want to fix F as well, we will have to add a dollar symbol before this also. Now you see it doesn't change. But for now, I will only fix the 2 but not the F. Now for repayment amount, again if I drag, the cell reference will change which I don't want. Here also I will add the dollar symbol before the 4 and now I can drag. The reference remains. The final one I will just drag and it works just fine. Now we have checked all the formulas to see if they are safe to copy paste. So I can just copy this entire row and paste it all the way till the bottom. Now if we look at the last line, you can see that the outstanding amount here was 12,052 and 80 rupees interest got added in the last month and the due became 12,133. So when I paid the last installment of 12,133, my outstanding became zero. My loan is fully repaid. Now if I want to find out how much we are paying additionally as interest alone, first we can calculate how much we are paying in total. That is installment amount into 120. And my loan amount was 10 lakh. So the interest I am paying is this minus this. 4,55,931. Now let's say I want to check what will be the situation if my interest rate is higher. I can just change the interest rate here to 12% and everything will change automatically. My EMI will also go up and the total will also go up and the interest will also go up. If the loan amount is expected to change, I can just edit this amount and again the entire calculation will change. Now let's say I want to compare two different scenarios against each other. What will be the situation with 10% interest and how much it will be with 12%. For this, I can just select this entire calculation, including the table, copy it and paste the whole thing here. Now there is one thing you should cross check whether if all the links have changed to this set or if anything is still remaining linked to the earlier set of data. If we had used dollar symbol anywhere to freeze the column reference, there would have been errors. For example, if I had put $f here and I copy pasted it here, now this cell will still remain linked to this. So that would be an error. And that is why we did not put the dollar before $f so that when we copy paste it to the right, the cell reference will also automatically change. Now I can enter one value here and another value here and compare them side by side. Now some tips to keep in mind while modeling. As much as possible, enter each variable only once and link everything to it. For example, I am entering interest rate only once here and all the EMI and interest calculations are linked to the same cell. This is a better way to do it rather than entering within each cell whenever interest is required. For example, some people may calculate interest like this. I can also enter the EMI amount like this. But the problem with this is that if I want to check what will be the case for a higher interest rate, I will have to go and edit the interest rate at each of these places wherever the number is hard coded. So if I enter it once here and all the references to this variable are linked to this cell only, then I can just change this in one place and everything will get changed on its own. Now going back to the EMI formula, we had skipped the two optional parameters in the formula. In my present value and time value videos, I have covered that present value is the cash that flows on the first day and future value is the cash that flows on the last day. So if I enter 50,000 under the future value parameter, I am assuming that I will get another 50,000 on the last day, that is after 120 installments. Now if we see here, the loan amount outstanding has become minus 50,000. 
So if we add that 50,000 here, it becomes zero. So this transaction essentially involves two receipts, 10 lakh at the beginning and 50,000 on the last day. If we put minus 50,000 in this formula for future value, it is referring to us paying another 50,000 in the future to the bank after 120 installments. Now you see, even after 120 installments, there is 50,000 loan left. We owe this to the bank on the last day. And when we pay the 50,000, we will minus 50,000 here and this will turn to zero, which means that the loan is now closed. The next parameter is type. And there are two options here. If I put zero, it assumes that the EMI is paid at the end of the month. And if I put one, it assumes that I am making the EMI payment at the beginning of the month. Now what difference does that make? If you look at our calculations here, our first installment happens at the end of the month. Loan is taken on 1st April, interest gets accrued till the end of the month and after that I make the EMI payment on April 30th. This is the default assumption. And that is why when you don't enter 0 also, it gives the same value. But if we put 1, it will assume that the EMI is paid at the beginning of the month. Now you can see that the EMI amount changes. So what's happening here? Let's check at the bottom of the table. This is not 0. So the model that we built is taking into account the assumption that EMI is paid at the end of the month. So formula is assuming that the EMI is paid at the beginning of the month. So we will have to fix it. If I'm paying my installment upfront on day 1, I won't have to pay interest till that day. So I will shift the EMI right next to this. So how much will be left after paying the EMI? This minus this. So my April month interest will be charged only on this amount. At the end of the month, the balance will be this plus this. And that will be the opening balance for my next month. So I will have to link it to this. Now I will once again check that all the dollar symbols are in place. And if I drag it all the way to the bottom, you will see that after my last installment on the first day of the month itself, it is becoming zero. So now our model and formula assumptions are in line. This case is not very usual. No point in calling it a 15 lakh loan if I have to pay back 20,000 immediately. I might as well take a 14 lakh 80,000 loan. With this, I hope you will be able to build your own models for loan repayment schedule. But again, in practical life, there could be more complications. For example, your EMI may not start from the first month itself. It may start after two years because of a moratorium period or your interest rate may keep changing every quarter if you have opted for a floating rate interest. In this model, we didn't have the flexibility to change the tenure. 120 installment remained as it is. But if we want to compare a 8-year loan with a 12-year loan, we need to make the model more dynamic and I'm planning to cover that in my next video. So thank you all for watching this video. If you learned something new and useful, please hit the like and subscribe button and stay tuned for the next video where I'll be covering some of the advanced modeling techniques.